per se. So there are two videos I'm talking about. There is a video on how to find literature. There's a video on how to write. There's a video on how to conduct systematic review. And um, for the systematic review, Obed went through some parts of it with you, and I'm going through another part of it with you again. The reason is that I need to echo it a number of times because this is something that you need to know, know how to do. Okay. So hopefully by the time I finish, if there are any relevant questions, I'm actually go through, I'll answer them. Okay, thank you very much. And thanks, I'm sorry okay. about- Sorry, Papi, I'm, I'm back. Uh, I talked about it. Yeah, I was asking you a question earlier about when you were teaching them how to find literature, you talked about all the literature databases. No, we only touched on the scopus, but not the, the others. Okay, maybe well, we can find some time. Or go to that my page and look for the last year's group and give the put the links in the platform, the links to um us teaching how to be able to find literature so they can watch it. I will be honest. Okay. Yeah, because okay. looking at the sessions and the time that I want to move on to the wheelchair matters, which has to do with the theories. Theories can take me about three sessions and I have to collapse it into one session. And I have to teach about the actual qualitative methods. So I want to spend some time on those ones and then how to analyze. So because of the yes. fact that we, we have not been able to agree on a, uh, a second class time, I have to find a way of also being smart about it. If I leave it for okay. the students, they will never no, of course. get a choice. Uh, um, uh, um, Madam Zelda, I'm not- Yes, well, we finally agreed on the second time. Um, so I wanted to ask you if Thursday evening 6 p.m. works for you. Please. I told you that don't ask me the thing the day that you um, that Thursday you are asking me. The, 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 oh, yes, but that yes, we, we had not agreed um agreed because okay, so um, health policy, find health time, economics. Find another time, call me and discuss that. Not the time I yes, come to class. When you do that, yes, you look like I'm the one chasing it, and you are not the chasing. You have not called me this week to discuss this, have you? No problem. No problem. I have, I rather have contacted you asking that you still have not made your mind. <laughs> okay. Yes, bro. This, we have made that. I've mind. said this thing for three weeks. So it shows how you. Oh, can... Sorry, we're going to chase you soon. We're chasing you for next week. We'll, we'll, we'll do it soon. Zelda is right. We all couldn't agree. So please forgive us. We shall chase you with alacrity, sir. Please. I don't have a problem. The time is the three weeks has passed already. So you are the ones who are losing, not me. Next week, they ask you, you, you pile it up. I also have other things to do. And I don't know about my availability yet. So that's why I said that you talk to me at another time. Okay, so let's get into the conducting of the uh, review of literature. And I realize that you are not actually also watching the videos because of the way you ask me several times, you guys, the way you ask me questions. So. I don't know how I'm going to encourage you to watch the videos, but I'll find a way. And I won't, I won't, when I find a way, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Anyway, okay. Maybe I'll have to give an assignment on some specific videos, which will make everybody go and sit down and watch it. <laughs> seems, it seems most of you are assignment-based in terms of uh, 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 assessment-based. So when they give you assessments, then you it, it actually stirs up some enthusiasm to go and work. <laughs> Anyway, but I understand that they are very, they are good different groups. There are those who are extremely serious, those who are serious, those who don't know what they are doing, and then those who they really don't want to be here. So I don't know which, where everybody falls, but I've seen these three ty four types of people in the class. I'm hoping that by the time we finish, most of them will move to the upper, the first one, those who are extremely serious. Anyway. So conducting systematic literature review. Now, part of what you are doing in a, a PhD is to try to understand um, what others have done so that you can be able to position what you need to do. Last week, we talked about the most important uh, influencing factor for your ability to do your long uh, your thesis. It has to do with the, the gaps in the literature. So we need to know how to find gaps. And finding gaps meaning that you should review what exists. So what we'll try to do today is to try to understand the diff one of the ways of doing the review. There are so many ways, and I do, I, I do engage in so many different types of reviews. 
I've been able to em em embody that a lot of those type of reviews within um, Obed. So if you can actually have another time with Obed, maybe you could actually, he could actually show you the different types because I don't have all of it to teach like biometric, like the Prisma method and which is linked to systematic review. And there are also some reviews that are just topic based. We just pick the theme and then we just write around the theme. We don't, we pick literature that are rather, uh, rather based on the structure of the theme, not more about um, trying to cover all the literature that is out there. And different supervisors require different approaches. For example, the approach I just mentioned, which is a topical review, you have a topic and you structure the topic out. When you structure the topic out, you write the, the work, um, the thesis according to the topics that are coming in. So let me just jump. I'm not going to teach in a logic, I mean, a linear format. I want to teach you to be able to go and solve a problem. So I, I'll, I'll mix the things I'm doing. So that's easier for me because I want to cover a lot of things. So allow me to, uh, to not to be structured in my teaching today. Because if I do that, I can help me capture, do a lot of things. So for, for example, um, so let me give you the context. Would the literature review is a synthesis of available resources and materials, which is, which with a strong relation to the topic in question, accompanied by a description, a critical evaluation, comparative analysis of each week, each work. Now, this is the most important thing that structures every review. Every review means that you are bringing two or more things together. That's the word synthesis. So it means that you are going to pick literature and you are going to bring the resources together. Now the resources you are picking up, picking them up, you may pick them from academic data and also non-academic data, the academic uh, 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 repositories and non-academic repositories, depending on the type of review you are doing. So somebody can carry, carry out a review and bring things from um, uh, and the industry, industry reports, something from the World Bank, something from Bank of Ghana, add it to the academic one. But it has to serve a purpose. For example, if I'm writing a research problem, the word says research problem, most of my academic literature, most of my resources are going to come from academic literature because it's research problem. But if I'm writing research background, I can draw on literature from both academic and non-academic, like I was showing you last week. So you need to know what you are doing in every review. Now, literature review is a product and a process at the same time. The product is what you call the literature review chapter that you see in the chapter two of the long essays. Um, but as a process, throughout the whole thesis, you are reviewing literature or you are reviewing something. Either you are, for example, in chapter one, in the background, you are reviewing what has happened in the industry to be able to point out where there's an industry concern that you should, uh, you should respond to. In research problem, in chapter one, you are now reviewing literature to point, point out, academic literature to point out where the gaps are. When you go to the research purpose, you are looking at the different gaps that came up to state up a purpose of your work. When you go to research objectives, you are also re having a reflection of a review that out of the purpose, hey, I say, what can then be done? Every time one more, then we hear the... hey. oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not serious. <laughs> I just see one example. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So when you take <laughs> when you take the uh, objectives and questions, you are reviewing um, some of the um, um, thematic areas that came up out of your research um, problem, which led to your research purpose, and then now you are stating them in form of questions. Now, when you get to the significance of your study, you are looking at the potential benefit of your work. So you are looking at what, in terms of your writing, you are trying to tell us that if we should do the work, what, how will we benefit in terms of research? How will we benefit in terms of practice? How will we benefit in terms of policy? So it means that you should know the policy gaps that this work could, your work could actually address. And then the practice, practitioner gaps or knowledge, um, 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 knowledge, uh, um, Knowledge and knowledge gaps, the practitioner knowledge gaps that you could respond to, or the positive knowledge in the practitioner sector that you could actually respond to, respond to, or the industry that you could respond to. Or lastly, the research gaps that you could also be responding to, that will go to your significance. When you go to your chapter two, which is your literature review, now you are actually conducting what we know and what we don't know. So that whole area, that thematic area of choosing, you are calling women entrepreneurship. What do we know about it? What do don't we know about it? So that one goes, not just be, goes beyond just what you have narrowed down to your work to be able to understand the whole area. It will start with the conceptualization of 
uh, of, of explaining all the concepts of, under women entrepreneurship. So what is entrepreneurship? What is women entrepreneurship? What is this synonymous with something like female entrepreneurship? You do all those things there. And then what I maybe in case your work is about motivation or uh, uh, predictors of women inter entrepreneurship, you need to look at what does what are some of the predict predictive uh, dimensions or predictive factors for women entrepreneurship. Then you, if depending on your work, you may even go into what theories have been used to study women entrepreneurship, what methodologies have been used to study women entrepreneurship. The research that has been done, how has Africa been represented in the area? Because you are coming from an African country and what are the issues of concern that Africa expects you to do? So that would have done in the, you have done a good work in that, in that, types of, in that type of uh, um, um, discussion. Then you go to the next chapter that you have your theoretical foundation. Your theoretical foundations, what will you be doing? You look at it in, and now you have, you have done some preliminary theoretical discussion, but you have to narrow down to what are the possible theories that have been used to study this area and what could, what, what could you end up using? So you tell us, maybe you have selected three theories. What are those three theories? Why, what are the um, weaknesses of those theories? Who's postulated those theories? How can you apply the theories to your own work? That will lead you to your conceptual framework. Then you go to another chapter, which may be your methodology. Then you explain the different methods in research and then make your choices to co co concern data collection. So throughout the work, even by time you get to discuss, you have to compare your findings to your the literature that you mentioned in the, the, in the literature review in chapter two as a product. So the whole long essay or thesis is a product of a review process. Sometimes you're reviewing academic literature, sometimes you're reviewing people's statements in terms of field data and comments, especially like qualitative research, interpretations that people are giving to you on the field. Sometimes you're also comparing what you have reviewed from the field to what you have reviewed from the literature. That's what we call discussion, to find out whether there is any new knowledge or any, that's just a confirmation, there's a contradiction. So review itself is what you have mentioned here, the available resources. The resources can be academic resources, not academic resources, but they all come into play depending on what you are using it to do. So please let's be careful of what, where we are going to apply the, uh, the product of the review. When you finish the review that you have done, where are you going to use it at? So that's one thing that you should think about. Now, every good literature review should focus on the topic that is in question. So there's a topic that will be always be in question. Now, for the whole thesis, there's a topic in question. You are doing women entrepreneurship. You are doing cryptocurrency. You are doing research on uh, a small business, uh, uh, accounting practices in small um, family businesses. So that could be a whole thematic area. You've got small family business as one area, small business as another area. Then you also have uh, accounting practices. So you need to explain what is accounting practice. You need to explain what is a small business. And you need to explain what is a small family business. So last week, when I was showing an example from a, a small paper, a, a kind of a general paper somebody had written, if you look at that, one of the paragraphs, the student, the, the author explained what a small business is. Then you want to explain what a, a family business is. Then combine what a small family business is. Before that, he then linked it to the accounting practices. So anytime you are doing your thesis, you should also know all the top, top concepts in your in the, the, the work that you are trying to do. Now, when you are writing the whole thesis, the thesis should, the literature should primarily focus on what you are trying to write. But in every single section, there may be a theme that you are also trying to address. For example, there may be a section of your work that is just on, let's say, definition of small business. In that scenario, you are not just talking about accounting practice. So that part should, the literature that you use in that part should only just define uh, uh, um, uh, small businesses. Let me, let me open, I have to teach in a way that will be much more useful to you. So okay, so if you look at, let's look at this gentleman's work. Look, look at this paragraph. This whole paragraph is just trying to talk about the relevance of small businesses. So it starts by giving an example from the USA and then tells you that it can be also observed around the world. So that paragraph, the theme here is just about talking about relevance. Now, then the next par paragraph here is talking about linking uh, some of the factors that uh, affect the success of, of, of small, small firms with accounting practices. So that the literature that is selected here is different from the literature that is selected here. Now, the next paragraph, again, is all about 
define definitions of small business and linking linking it to um, family businesses. So the definition, the literature that is used here is also different from the literature that is used here. The last, the last part here is now trying to present a research gap. So now a research gap where the link between accounting practices and small businesses and also small family businesses. So the literature that is used here, we echo. Some of them maybe are picked from this place, but they are echoing what he wants to do. So for every small paragraph the person is trying to write, there is a focus, there is a purpose, there is a particular objective that the person is trying to achieve. In each of them, he is conducting a, a review. So the definition says that it's a synthesis of available resources and material. That means that when I look at your work, you have brought two or more things together. A review cannot be built around only one paper. So if I look at even this small section, I can count one, two, three, four. So I've got, um, um, I don't think you can see my annotation. So let me use this one. Collins and Jarvis, one. Leachy, Le two. McMahon, Mac and, and 2001, three. McMahon, 2000, and, and, and Holmes, 1991, four. Then Falcona, uh, Falcona and then uh, uh, and Reed, 2005. So this is six small section, five, five, five literature there. Then this one, he's talking largely about what small, small businesses are. There's only one literature there. Then he goes back again and looks at accounting discipline and small business, accounting business, uh, discipline and small family, family businesses. Then he's also bringing one, you have got one, Sonini, Sogini, uh, Sonini uh, et al. And then Lemma and Dures at uh, 2007, Feltham 2005, and Falcone and Reed again. So this one is about a four or five here. Now, so every paragraph that you are reading is an engagement of literature. That is the thing, that, that's what the people, um, what I was trying to emphasize here. That is a, um, the, the resources and material are in strong relation with the topic in question. So you're going to write a paragraph, I'm writing a whole thesis, I'm writing a whole page, I'm writing a whole section. It has to be relevant to the topic in question or what I'm trying to focus on. Number two, it's always going to be accompanied by a description. A description means that it tells you what is in the paper. But it doesn't do that alone. It goes down to critically evaluate and compare other people's work. So a very good, that is what we call analytical writing. So in the in a good literature review, you have got descriptive writing and analytical writing. Descriptive writing tells you what is in a paper. Analytical writing tells you that what it implies or what makes argument based on that particular thing that is in the paper. Now, if I just go and I just say that um, uh, um, Kwame now found that this and this and that in his study, and another, then I go out, let me just give an example. So I start from um, uh, Zelda found this and this and this and this in Eastern region. And then Jewel found this and this and this in the Western region. Then John John found this and this and this in Southern Africa. All this I'm just saying is all descriptive because I'm just summarizing what the different papers did. But if I come and just say that there are three different, there, there are three key arguments when you are discussing human entrepreneurship, um, 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 uh, namely uh, uh, behavioral, uh, uh, necessity and then uh, uh, let's say advantage. Now, from the behavioral perspective, John found this and this and this and this and this and that, and then pointed out this. However, in contrary to the behavioral perspective, Zelda argues that this and this and this is with evidence from an Eastern region Ghana. But despite these two other allegations, there is also, um, I mentioned behavioral, I've mentioned. Um, what else did I see? I think I mentioned another dimension. So there's also the advantage dimension that is coming from the US, also emphasized by Jewel. This is what we call analytical writing, and that is what we want you to do. I hope you understand me. If you read the, the, the chapter on literature review, I explain all these things there. I'm not, so I'm teaching, this one I'm teaching like I'm teaching on a blackboard. So please listen, you will not be seeing all this are in my slides, but I just want to teach you from my heart. So let's continue. So this is what we want to lean to. So when he, the question is that how do we arrive at that, um, that part? It means that we need to be able to have available resources and material, which we have read, so that we can know what is in them, description. And then when we know the different, different things in them, we can know which of them compare together, which of them are contrary to each other, so that we can produce a critical evaluation. Let me repeat this again. We need to find, first of all, find the, find the literature. That's the first step of um, have a topic in mind. In fact, that's the first step. Select a topic. The second step is find the literature. The, uh, and, and then the third step, make sure the literature is relevant to the topic in question. So first of all, find the topic in question. 
don't think I have it. It's in the other ones. So let's, uh, it's in the one that I said go and watch. So let me continue. So find the topic in question. Number two, find the, uh, the, the, the literature. Number three, find the relevance of the relevant relation. relation. Find the relevance in the topic of it. Means that after you have searched and you have got 25,000 uh, um, um, outcomes or papers outlined in your search engine. When some of the search engines are Emerald, another search engine is Wiley, Wiley, another search in engine is, um, oh, give me some. Uh, Science F Direct. Science Direct, good. So when we go to Science Direct, and Science Direct, you hear the word is science. It doesn't mean that you don't do other things on humanities. But when you go to Science Direct, the challenge that you, the, the, you can use it to be able to carry out some of the topics, but Emerald may be giving much more managerial issues. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't exhaust, exhaust your searching by looking at almost, quite a, a, a voluminous number. So when we, let me just say, use Science Direct as an example. So when you go to Science Direct, for example, and I have, oh, in fact, the women entrepreneurship, see, I've been talking about this topic for a long time. So it seems women entrepreneurship in developing can now have even added something, female entrepreneurship. So look at what I'm getting out. So when I'm getting all this, this migrant, this one we have done that, we, have, we saw this paper last week, migrant entrepreneurs in, let me zoom in a little bit. So social entrepreneurship in, uh, in tackling poverty, uh, migrant entrepreneurs, okay, so this one we looked at it last week. So you see that literature on women entrepreneurs have looked at migration and emotional encounters. Then we are also seeing another gender responsiveness and social entrepreneurship. Then we are seeing entrepreneurship uh, education. And we, are, we can continue, I see culture and this, but we have to be sure that what you are looking for is what we have seen. So I can check the abstracts of each, the papers, especially in terms of relevance. And then I try to look at what are they saying about women entrepreneurship? You may realize that sometimes because of the search, women entrepreneurship may have been just been mentioned as one, women has been mentioned as one, one line or one, one word. It doesn't mean that the, the, the topic is about women entrepreneurship. Even if, sometimes if you check the keywords of that particular, so the keywords are not there. You may not see anything about women entrepreneurship in it. And that means that you should drop it. Because it may not, it may be good for giving you a theory. It means that it's not very highly relevant. It may be low, have low relevance. It means that your the, the, the number of times human entrepreneurship is mentioned in this particular paper is very low. So you don't want to see it as your highly relevant paper to, for you to use for your work. But when we go back and we see that sometimes some of them have even mentioned it in their title. Let me. Oh, this is even page one or page one, it's ended. What's maybe I added a uh, female in, in development? Let's, and I'm using female, not women. So let's see. Well, wow. okay, now I've had more. Okay, now I have more. So let me see. I don't think I may even get much. Because of this database I'm using, I just want to use this one as an example. I don't think there's much here. Okay. So advanced search can help you to do other forms of search. That's why, please just watch the video. Uh, Obed will help you to go through. Okay, now when I added women, Am I seeing something different? I'm not seeing anything much difference. It seems almost the same thing that I'm getting. It means that the, this is not a good place for my, my study on. I'm searching by relevance. I'm still not getting much. But maybe if I talk women entrepreneur, women technology, te techno and technology, I'll get more. Maybe uh, let me see uh, what Emerald will do. <laughs> okay, so women entrepreneurship. Okay, let me finish it. Let's just jump here. So look at what I'm, oh, women entrepreneurship in family business, dominant topics. So this is a review. Interestingly, we have even found a review of the topic. That's, I was telling students, some of my students that it's best to start from somebody's review to know what, so that you can be able to know all that has been done and have a snapshot of what is there. So these are two, these two are reviews. Uh, a systematic review of women entrepreneurship in sports. You see, this one is even in an industry. And this is women entrepreneurship in family business. This is also in a particular domain. So I have enough to even start with. But the, the actual papers too are there. You see, assessing entrepreneurship as emancipation perspective among women in STEM. Women entrepreneurship in developing countries, what we focus on GCC and the, the, the Gulf Corporation and Kuwait. Okay. So you, then those are the country level studies. So I could actually go through and find quite a number of different papers on that. Now, the one that has much more women entrepreneurship issues it will become highly relevant because for me to read. For example, the ones which are reviews are very, very important for me to read. So it helps me to be able to understand how to even structure my work and what has been done and what has not been done. It will give me in a snapshot what I should look at. Okay. 
This is a bibliometric review, so it's quite different. That's more of a count or a scientific mapping. And um, if I say I'm jumping into that, I'll finish now. So let me hold on. Okay. So what we are seeing here is that the review is important, but in every review, there's a right, there's an aspect of the writing of the review. Good. Now I'm going to jump to something called the structure of the review and come back because I'll use it to teach. Now, in the types of writing, people can write in many different ways when they are presenting a review. One of the ways that they do that is to try and present it either in a chronological manner. And then that means that when you are downloading your papers, you have to download it chronologically or in a thematic manner, you develop, download it thematically or in a methodological manner, you download it with the method in mind. That's why I said I have to jump. I have to just show you what people do. Okay. So there can be a chronological manner, there can be a thematic approach, and then it can also be um, okay. a, a method approach. Yes, a method approach. Sorry, I'm trying to load the that particular topic here. So this topic two and uh, how to write. Okay, so you see that chronological, thematic, and then methodological. Now, every type of ritual review will have every literature review is supposed to have an introduction, body, and conclusion. Now, this is not about literature review as listen carefully. This is more of literature review with um, as the writing, the process. As you are, it has its own internal structure. There's always an opening st statement. There is a, a body that captures the, the literature. And then there's a concluding statement on what he wants to do with what he has mentioned. Now, it doesn't mean that ideally all these three are in every literature review or as a paragraph. In fact, or that's what I mean by the process. So most of the time, students write and they just focus on the body part. They don't do the introduction conclusion. And that's what affects the way they write and how people can understand the way they write. Now, I'm not saying that introduction as a, as a, uh, as a section. I'm talking more as a paragraph or as an opening sentence. So look at this one. This is a statement of a review that is trying to use a chronological approach. So it's going to look at how issues of a particular a thematic issue has, or a topic or a phenomenon has selected has changed over time. Sometimes authors do that. So you may pick, he may start by looking at, this is all about unemployment. So look at what the person said. Richard demonstrated that the key factors which contribute to unemployment in Africa have changed over time. Now, Please, I have to teach another thing at the same time because we are here. I want to teach everything at the same time. The way the person has written it, we call this way of writing is a chronological way of presenting a review. At the same time, he's doing something we call the building blocks of, a, of, of literature review. Every literature review is about argument, evidence, and illustration. So you argue, you provide evidence, and you illustrate. You argue, you provide evidence, and illustrate. So very good literature reviews are, have always got it. Whether you do chronological, thematic, or methodological, or whichever one, there's even so many different ways of structuring a review. But this three is what I'll just talk about. <clears throat> and in this three, the style that is always advisable to be analytical in your writing to be analytical in your writing, again, to be analytical in your writing, three, to be analytical in your writing, I've repeated it three times. You need to use argument, evidence, illustration. So that one is more about the style of the writer. And then the structure of the writing is what you have chronological, methodological, thematic. There are so many different versions, but these three are dominant three is what I'll teach you. you. You can read more about other ones as you come across. Sometimes you don't even teach it. You have to identify it yourself. So chronological, thematic, and then methodological. Now, this is being said, then you can also make sure that when you are writing, you are making it analytical. Because literature review means that you is accompanied by what? You said a synthesis of available resources and materials with a strong relation to the topic in question, accompanied by a description. So every literature review, we are going to test it in the paragraphs to a mark. Is there a description, number one? Uh, or it can come later or can come in the beginning. Number two, is there a critical evaluation and comparative analysis? Comparative analysis means that you are actually comparing people's papers. And then number two, or you are finding authors whose work 
are together. So when their works are together, you can put them together in the in a bracket. So that means that you have review. Written review is a synthesis. A synthesis means that I bring two or more things together. So the first paragraph, let's read, and then we have apply the style of writing to it. The first paragraph says that literature review demonstrates that key factors which contribute to unemployment in Africa have tended to change over time. In the late 1990s, researchers argued that inflation and low wages contributed to unemployment. Unemployment, Uche 2000 and Benson 2003. For example, a study by Uche on unemployment in banking industry in Nigeria highlighted that inflation affected turnover of banks, which also had an effect in salary payments. Over 2,000 banks in um, banks bank employees lost their jobs at the end of 1999. Now, if I take the paragraph, the first set of argument we are looking at chronological writing, so it means that I'm supposed to look at the timeline. When I look at the timeline, the first timeline is about the late 1990s. And the second time, timeline is here. On the other hand, by 2004, researchers discussed that the lack of startup capital for, for startup initiatives and high interest rates on loans stalled entrepreneurial ventures and contributed to unemployment or the lack of object um, opportunities. Now, that's TACO 2005. A comparative study, comparative to what? Comparative study means that he's, in that approach, they compare, they compare either themes or they compare either um, they, have a, they have a standard at which they are comparing whatever they are, the study that is being carried out with. There are so many ways you can do a comparative study. Let me not get into that, but I'm trying to mention a comparative study on case, on, on, on Kings from by, done by Keynes in 2006 come on SME industry in Ghana and Uganda. So this is why they compare Uganda and Ghana, maybe one being the, being the, uh, the, the control and one being the one that you compare with, whichever one the person did has been a, comparative study between two countries. Share similar findings, similar to what? Similar findings to Taku's work. So you see that there's a link with Taku's work. On the effects of unemployment in Egypt, uh, sorry, unemployment, the effects of, of startup capital and lo interest loans on, on entrepreneurship and unemployment. In a recent study on unemployment in, in Egypt, Salia found political instability, poor governance, and the lack of foreign direct investment to be critical factors influencing unemployment. Other studies, other studies to what? Other studies to Salia's own. Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, attest to these findings, and he puts it there. In effect, unemployment in Africa may be viewed from a multifaceted perspective. Perspective cannot reduce a, a single factor. So this one is the concluding statement. The beginning statement is this one. It should demonstrate the key factors that contribute to unemployment in Africa have tended to change water. So this is a kind of a more of a small, uh, 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 a close, maybe two or three paragraphs, all coming together to make an argument. So in the first sentence is put across, there's a closing, concluding sentence. So we can take, we can see that we can see an opening argument and a closing argument. Good. Number two, when we end the open argument, is there a, is there a argument evidence illustration, illustration? So there's an argument where the is there any illustration? The illustration is more about the fact that you said I've tended to change over time. So you need to show over time. So there's one timeline here, another timeline here, and another timeline here. So there's three timelines. One timeline being 1990s, another timeline being 2004, another timeline being 2001 derish. So we have three timelines. So it's giving evidence to what you said. Number three, when we take the individual timelines, are they, are they literature, are they analytical? Okay, literature review is what argument, evidence, illustration. What's the argument? Okay, in the late 1990s, researchers argued that inflation and low wages contribute to unemployment. So the argument has been put across. But who said it? Literature review is a synthesis of available resources, argument, evidence. The evidence is coming from Uche 2000, Benson 2003. He said researchers argue. So who are the researchers? Benson and Uche. So Benson and Uche attest to the fact. Now, because you and I were not there when Benson and Uche were doing their work, I need to illustrate so that I can enhance understanding. So I take Uche's when I illustrate it. For example, a study by Uche 2000 on unemployment in the banking industry in Nigeria highlighted that inflation affected the turnover of banks, which also had an effect on salary payments. Now, what you have seen here that within the, in the internal soundness, the internal soundness of the particular paragraph is, is, can be attested to. Why? Because there is argument, there is evidence, there is illustration, illustration. Argument. You say inflation, low wages were the contributing factors to unemployment in the late 1990s. Who said it? Uche 2000 and Benson 2000. That's your evidence. Here is the illustration. So, of course, I was not there with you. So, show me the illustration. Uche illustrates to you. So, what we have seen here is that there's argument, evidence, illustration. So, this is good. Think and it goes. 
we have been able to establish that. Now we go to, on the other hand, another timeline. Remember that we are now doing two reviews in one. There's the review of the whole issue about unemployment. And then, then you argue that the unemployment changes, factors are influenced by, the factors that influence unemployment differ according to timelines in the chronological manner. So I need to show the timeline. For each timeline, I have to make sure that my arguments are sound before I move to another timeline. Note, note that. So I'm doing three reviews within one review. So there are four reviews here. The whole thing is one is a review, but in it, I'm doing different reviews with different timelines. And each of the timelines have the papers that attest to it. On the other hand, by 2004, I'm looking at another timeline. Researchers discussed that the lack of startup, the lack of capital for startup initiatives and high interest rates or loans toward the entrepreneurial venture. So who said that? Taku 2005. But Taku is the only person who has said it. I need to find other people. It's a synthesis of available resources and material. So find other people that can attest to that, uh, Taku. So uh, he goes on to say, a comparative study on SME industry in Uganda and Uganda shares similar. The word similar is what we call the hook phrase. The hook phrase is linking that particular sentence to the sentence that is before it. The sentence starts here. Researchers discuss that. Uh, um, the lack of capital for startup initiative and high interest rates stalled on loans, stalled entrepreneurship ventures. So I say similar to or similar to that one. So what have I done? It's accompanied by a critical evaluation. What is inside the work? And then I, I accompanied by a description, a critical evaluation, and a comparative analysis of each work. So I'm comparing each work with another one. So in the brackets here, Uche and Benz are compared. But when I got here, I put Taku here. Then I went to the next one. I saw Kingston's work. So because I want to use Kingston's work to illustrate at the same time, compare, I pointed out that this is what is in Kingston's work. Kingston's findings are similar to that of Taku. So I have achieved my comparison. I've also been able to show you what the description of what is in uh, uh, Kingston's work. So in that case, I've been able to justify and find evidence for my argument for 2004. But the, by two, by the argument for 2004 can start on its own. I can write a sentence that starts from researcher discuss that. Or, but when I put in statements like by 2004, even that one can start on its own. But when I put a word like this phrase, on the other hand, what does the on the other hand mean? On the other hand means that there was something I was saying earlier. So I need to put the on the other hand there to link it to a previous paragraph so that it can be sound. Descriptive writing stand on their own. Analytical writing always make a, make a link between each other so that they can be able to have soundness in the arguments that are being put across. The first argument that I'm trying to emphasize is that unemployment in Africa have changed over time. I presented the first timeline and I'm presenting the second timeline, but to make the paragraph link to the other paragraph, I need to have a hook phrase or a, statement, a word or a sentence that can link the paragraph that I'm writing now to the previous paragraph. So what is literature review actually about? It's about writing paragraphs and after that sitting down to analyze which paragraphs link together. How will you know that? Unless you know the literature and you know the links between the different literature. So when you have one literature and you look at another literature, you can be able to say, what are the links? Are they telling a story? Can they be linked together? Which of them can go into the same paragraph? Which of them can be another paragraph? And I will link them by a statement. So I'm in another timeline, so I define it. Then I go to a third timeline, which is more recent. In a recent study on unemployment in Egypt, Salia found, Salia 2011 found political instability, poor governance, and lack of di direct, lack of foreign direct investment to be critical factors influencing unemployment. Now, I found Salia's work, and I realized that Salia looked at Egypt, and we know that Egypt has got some, some time for some time now of previously at the time around that time, they had some issues with uh, stability in the country. And that also has an impact on unemployment, which um, from the literature we are seeing here. So all I have to ask is that which other country in Africa has been having unrest around the same time? It's likely that I may find a paper on, in, uh, on that country that also has an issue. So we just check Cote d'Ivoire. Anything about unemployment and entrepreneurship in Cote d'Ivoire, that brings Johnson's paper out. Unemployment and entrepreneurship in, in Sierra Leone, that brings Penn's paper out. So when I put it together, I can say other studies in Cote d'Ivoire and Sierra Leone attest. The way I attest to these findings is what is linking that one to the in the recent study by on, uh, uh, by, uh, uh, by on, on, um, on unemployment in Egypt. So what are we seeing here? Literature review is a synthesis of available resources, which have a uh, uh, a strong relation with the topic in question, and it's accompanied by a description. Description is about summarizing what is in the paper, but that's not enough. 
and the comp and the what and a critical evaluation and comparative analysis. A critical evaluation means that I should know what I can link it to, what I can compare to, what is in contrary, what is in in concept, or what is what kind of be, be in the same line of argument and what tends to be in contradiction, so that I can be able to use to present my argument. So what I have seen here is that I've been able to argue in this same paragraph that is true, which um, um, unemployment factors um, change in Africa. They are not static. Number two, it also means that the unemployment factors are multifaceted. There are multiple factors. That's why I say that here, it cannot be reduced to one single factor. That's the concluding statement. Before I could arrive at that concluding statement, I needed to illustrate and, de and, and demonstrate there, or illustrate for people to, to understand. So what we see with the structure of a literature review is that in a chronological sense, you are going to show how the, the topic you are trying to research on has changed over time. But let me be very frank with you. It's not every team that you may find chronological uh, uh, evidence to, to do this kind of um, uh, uh, um, timeline discussion. You will not find it always, but I'm going to let you understand that it exists. Number two. Sometimes you, the students, can also write thematically. For example, you are writing on unemployment and poverty. So we expect everybody reading the work would like to understand what is unemployment. So you have to have a section on unemployment and define what unemployment is. Then you also have to have a section on poverty and define what poverty is. Then you can also have a section that link poverty and unemployment. And then that links, uh, that tries to look at how to address poverty among the unemployed. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So in that scenario, what you are doing here is trying to be able to identify the, the literature that, uh, or the thematic, the sub-thematic areas that are relevant to explain the topic so that anybody can understand or everybody can uh, understand. So that's very, very, these are very, very important ways of knowing how to put things together. Now let's look at, I just want to show you an example through a paragraph. So now, uh, um, through, through a thesis. So let's look at this thesis. Uh, um, I'll just show you the table of contents so that you can appreciate because I want to teach a lot of things today. So good. Uh, my, 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 my. So look at this one. Knowledge and learning in organizing. This is a chapter two. But instead of conducting a review where you do account and explain the economic distribution of the literature, it's more of a topic-based one. So what is knowledge? So you have to explain it tacit and explicit knowledge, knowledge in organizations and individual collective, how organizations learn, learning in the, in the, in the employee, learning the organization, private and accessible and collective ministry, this is a theory, defining organizational learning, facilitating organizational learning, this is a framework. So you pick the theory that was linked to a framework, you explain please, please the framework, and then he, then he was able to add culture to the framework and then finish. So in, in here, the person may not say that he has read 2,000 papers before he wrote. All he was trying to write was structure the thing thematically. Some supervisors in your PhD like this, thematic writing. If you look at the topic that you're concerned, look at the different themes that will come up and write it thematically. It's not wrong. You write it, but you have to try and be exhaustive. Other supervisors don't like this approach. They want you to break down the papers into what a systematic review may require you to do. That means that you have to break down the paper into different themes that others can appreciate that you have done a very detailed, others can appreciate that you have done a very detailed work. I'm just gonna appreciate that. So let me just show you one that has to do with, uh, so look at this one. So there'll be, there's a methodology for the review, how I found the papers. The other one I just showed you, there's no need for you a methodology, but you are just searching based on the different topics. And you just search and then use that one to write. But if you look at here, there is a methodology for the review. And there's a review in the classification of the, of the research topics. Then you go to mapping of the mapping, means they're trying to understand what has been done so far in the M finance research. So the issues and evidence. So you think, and he broke them, he divided them into four parts. The identity, identification needs for M finance, why we need M finance, the design constraints for developing an M finance platform and then adoption patterns that we have found in the literature. The last one, assessment of the impact. Then from there, you go to conceptual approaches and methodological approaches. What kind of con theoretical concepts have been used to study and finance? And what are the methodological issues that we have been struggling with that? Good. Then from there, you can point out the research gaps. 
there's a gaps in issues, gaps in conceptual approach, gaps in methodology, points, pointers and, and uh, conclusions and pointers for future research. Now, this is also a good review, but this review is good when you are trying to take a stock of the literature in an area so that you can define where you'll be stepping on and what you'll not be stepping on. Now, how do a person by wisdom combine all these approaches in a thesis? So now we'll pick a thesis and then we'll look at a, thesis, a PhD thesis that has combined the two approaches in that thesis. Uh, please, after that, then I'll, then I'll let you ask your questions. Because after, after now showing you what I'm trying to talk about, then I can move into what I want to try and uh, how I'm, I can teach you how we can arrive here. That's how it is. So I'm showing you where we are going. And after that, I will show you how we can arrive there. Uh, Obed, are we doing good? Oh, yeah. We are sure we are good. <laughs> That's probably yeah. okay. Good. Okay, if Uber says that we are good, then we are good. If he says we are not good, we are not good. Okay. Wow. Just give me a second. Okay, good. So, um, please, sometimes some of you ask me, why don't I have examples from your department? I don't have access to every thesis in Ghana. So please don't beat me up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look at this thesis. Um, Are you having noise pollution? I'm seen by a, a computer that is playing. So if it is disturbing you, please let me know. Oh, but is there sound coming in? No problem. I'm not hearing any sound. Okay. Unless you are not using your phone. Okay, I think I've shown you some slides. Some... I can't find it. Oh, it's computer. Good, I'm sharing this one. Good, good, good. Now I can see it now. Uh, can you see my screen? It's surprised that I share I was not seeing my screen. So I'm asking whether you people can see it now. I'm not seeing my screen. So you can you see it? I can. Okay. okay. Yes, okay. Somehow okay. you're gonna ask me. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So you have here chapter two literally. So this is more of the topic review. So is or the thematic review. So the topic is the a chapter about you see it's about relation marketing. So relationship marketing defined. Evolution of relation market, how it started, that then, then relationship building, the different step, steps in it, then the constructs or the concept, concepts in the relation marketing. What, what are the objectives and outcomes of it? So there's trust, there's commitment, service quality, customer satisfaction, and customer loyalty. All of this are in the relation market. That's chapter two. But when you go to chapter three, then you are going to do what you want to do. So you want to do online relationship marketing. So you need to explain what relationship marketing is earlier. If you combine them into two, it becomes voluminous. And then usually we advise that every student, every good chapter shouldn't be above 25 pages. But sometimes our students go to 30 pages. That's double space. So just keep it in mind. Good. Now, look at it. This is where your gaps are coming from. So this chapter is a review of the literature in terms of producing a product called literature review. The other one was review the literature to explain the concept. So concept explanation is what we did in the chapter two. But chapter three is reviewing the the mother, the, the, the domain concept. The first one was the mother concept, which is relation marketing. Now the domain is online. So you are living online relation marketing, you are taking stock of what has been done in that area. So to do that, you said, okay, technology and relation marketing, you look at all the different ways, then classification of the uh, o, uh, research in o, ORM, then economic distribution over your years, methodological distribution, which methodologies have been used to study that area. Then you look at the different constructs that have been used to study. The different constructs under relation marketing in terms of antecedents and then outcomes and how they are being used, mediators, antecedents, and then um and and and, and moderators and outcomes. So sometimes one variable can be used for as a mediator, another one can the same variable and another people was used as an outcome or was used as a, a moderator. So that's what the the review here does. Then the review of conceptual approaches, what theories have been used to study ORM research. What are the gaps in terms of the issues? and uh, 
and ORM constructs? And what are the gaps in terms of methodology and, and, then, and then conceptual? So if you look at that one, greater emphasis must be placed on examining the relevance of commitment trust theory. That's the theory you found in the context of online relationship marketing. The commitment trust theory constitutes the most cited theory in ORM research based on this review. So you, if you don't do the review, what can you say? If you don't do the review, how will you know that which is the, the, the most used? So if somebody has done it for you earlier, good. But if somebody has not done it for you earlier, you have to draw on your own review to be able to establish a, a legitimacy for what the choices you are making. However, future research must be, make a conscious effort to untangle the confusion among previous authors. Remember, we, one of the reasons why we do a thesis is because of what confusion, conflicts, inconclusivity within, uh, uh, within the, the existing research. Remember, we mentioned that last week. Okay. And about the commission trust and its applicability to relationship marketing and online contests. Though they all agree that the model can be extended to measure the quality of relationships in the online contest, they contend that it, might, it can only be done amidst minor adjustments to the model. Nonetheless, they are, they are unable to come to a consensus concerning, concerning the exact forms of adjustments to be made. There is a lack of theoretical oriented, a theoretically oriented understanding of relationship between ORM activities, such as uh, including technology constraints like security and privacy, and the key mediating variables as commitment and trust. Previous research has just tested different technology variables, which offer little understanding. So it keeps on making a good case. After that, you also make a good case for um, the, the to the for the method part. Furthermore, studies conducted on ORM mentioned above seem to focus more on developed other more than developing countries. So they, developing country context. So the, the more of the context gap are linked to the and uh, the method gap. In fact, at this time, I think she put everything in together and called them method gap because where you collect your data is also part of your method. Okay. Or even call it this, somebody may even call it a research design gap. It means that the previous research designs have not looked at the, where you want to look into. There is a prevalence of European and North American studies with limited studies from Africa. Even within developed countries, the studies are primarily focused on retail. Now you see that how it's breaking it out. Even the developed country, the little that has been done, the studies have been done on retail, hospitality and tourism and in the industries. You see 20 articles. They can, he's counting all the articles, how many articles have, have been uh, even on banking. Uh, so you see, banking is the one which has had least. Look at it. So he's saying that uh, Provinca, et al has therefore called for more studies on the impact of internet on banking relation. This is corroborated by, you know, you see the writing of this is an argument and then this is a corroboration. So comparative analysis of each work is comparing again. Owing to the above, owing to the above, several researchers like Bron et al and Salo and then and Colgate, have, uh, Colgate, that's too pissed, <laughs> have also called for the research, <laughs> research findings in ORM, ORM to be attested across different industries and different geographical contexts, such as collective cultures like Africa, in order to enhance the understanding of ORM in relation to various business activities and, co and research contexts. The research, the current research relationship marketing studies on Ghana and other developing countries have been silent on issues concerning technology. None of the studies we have available have attended to develop a conceptual model to explore the relationship marketing and online technology. Hence, there's room for arguably a unique contribution to be made in the literature. Remember somebody was saying that, what is the originality? Your originality is about uniqueness. So uniqueness is about if you don't do this thing, what will be lost out? What you will not, won't we have? What is this first study being the first in doing that? I, see, I hope you can get, you can get the understanding now. Why significance it looks at it in a broader sense, research, um, practice, and then policy, more of what they can use it to do uh, if you do it, and what by doing what it can help. So uniqueness can be embodied within a significance. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Good. Now, but the uniqueness is that something that stands out at all. Significance can be, can be significant, but not unique. You know that. Something can be, uh, John, I hope you're listening. Something can be significant, but not unique. So unique means that what stand, makes it stand and, and depart from what the old ones have done and has never been done. So that's where the uniqueness comes in. Last week, I, I read that on cybercrime and you saw somebody's on how he was echoing the uniqueness of his work. Okay. Now, you see, all this thing that I'm just talking about is talking too much about how to be able to do a good review. The last one that I needed to point out in terms of the, uh, the structure part is more about the, uh, okay, this thematic review. I'm talking about thematic review already. 
more about the geographical review and methodological review where you can compare the geographic regions. We just saw somebody do the same thing, just compare develop against developing and countries against other countries and urban and rural. Uh, urban and, 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 and rural. And then you, somebody also did industries, different industries. So in, industries can also come under the domain. The method of data collection, quantitative versus qualitative. Sometimes you may realize that there have been a lot of quantitative studies in the area and most of the studies currently are not qualitative. Then maybe you can even look at which qualitative design or quantitative design they use, survey versus uh, case study. Sometimes students do, um, authors do that argument. Before you can then also look at in terms of the level of analysis, whether you're looking at individuals or you're looking at organizations, or looking at the nation, or looking at global and cross country. Okay. So let's look at another one more here. Then we'll use that one to point out what a bad review is about a bad review in terms of writing. Then we can go back to um, the, the bigger aspect of how the reviews are done. Okay, so look at this one. It said that social networking in the workplace is increasingly becoming a phenomenon in the social and business lives of employees. Statistics from the 2011 first report on social networking business stated that 85% of workers in America spend 30 minutes of working hours to visit social networking website. These statistics are not too far from that of Africa. As a recent study in South Africa also found. Now, let me guess, I've just taught you something. So let me ask you, the, word, the, the phrase, these statistics are not too far from that of Africans. What is this relevance in the sentence? In the paragraph here, what's the relevance of that statement? These statistics are not too far from that of Africa. I say that the persons um, that this is not uh, unique. So making a comparison um, and then getting something to um, add on to it or to buttress the study. Okay, so good. But he's doing something here. It's true that he's add on, he's buttering the study. But he's doing it. The first argument was from Forbes. Forbes and America. Which part of the region do they come from? Do you see that as developed regions? Do you see that? Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Then the second sentence, that of Africans, what is not developing? I know South Africa yes. is durable, but it's not, even if it's, it's emerging, let me even say emerging, it's in a developing region. Mm -hmm. So what you have just yeah. seen there is an example of developed against developing. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Where a person writes by comparing the literature that's come from developed environment and developing. Now, what they're also doing is that they're trying to let you understand this issue is not an issue that only affects America. It also affects other countries in the world. Now, for a physics, when you do that, it actually positions your work for you, your work. Because sometimes students are writing and they're writing only with Ghana literature. So it looks like, ah, this work really seems really relevant to Ghanaians. <laughs> There's no global relevance for this thesis. Because you cannot even draw an example that this issue is happening in maybe uh, uh, um, uh, a suburb of, of uh, Mississippi in the US. Because there are also small towns there. And that small town, maybe a hospital in a small, a hospital in the in US may be going through a similar thing and you may find a study to just match your point. So one thing that you always need to do is positioning of your work. If you start, I, I'm digressing a little bit, but I'm, I'm trying to help you. When you are doing your PhD and you always quoting only Ghana papers, you are positioning your work to be very Ghana minded. And, and, and but your, your, your examiner can be coming from South Africa, can be coming from uh, uh, New York, can be coming from Denmark, can be coming from Copenhagen, can be coming from uh, India. And you have done everything as if there's no global example to look at. It makes your work very, very narrow in terms of its arguments. And it's very, very also limited because you couldn't get other examples to challenge the knowledge that you have. The fact that you are doing the work in Ghana and even in, let's say, a global market, or you are doing it in, say, say uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, oh, this town in Tain, in the Boafu region, you are doing it there. It doesn't mean that it cannot compare the findings with like another town which has similar conditions of growth, like in Bangladesh or Indonesia. So please don't, don't limit your way to Ghana. Ghana is good for establishing contextual relevance, but the contextual relevance is a developing idea. So any other developing country can buttress your arguments. That's one. Number two. You are also trying to let, let the person, it's a literature review. You are supposed to write 60,000 words. And that thing looks, it looks, uh, uh, looks uh, uh, large. But and if you're not very careful, you end up writing, people think that it's easy and you're going 45,000. If you keep on writing just on just a few papers, few papers, how can you write large and fill the sheets? 
It's a long essay or a long thesis. So it's long, it's not short. So <laughs> pack it a little bit. Number three, it means that you are read well, you are, you are read widely. So if your review is always coming from three papers, two papers, and you keep on, you call it plagiarism of resource, uh, resources or, or references. You, have you took only these three and the, every, every chapter, the same three references are beginning to the end. So we can't the whole work, it's only three references, we'll fail you. The, it's, a, it's a synthesis of available resources and material. And the resources that are should be available. Available means that the reference should be provided so that we can find it and we can justify. That's what makes it scientific, one. So do it. Number two, available also uh, available resources and material. The materials are he didn't say available literature in in, in journals and available literature in in, in 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 magazines. He said available resources and material. So anything that is of relevance to the topic and relevant to the section you are writing may be necessary. It doesn't mean that part part your work with references throughout. That I've been seeing some students do that. That's <laughs> number two. He would part the ref, every two lines thirty references. Ah. What we are trying to say is that I, I tell my students that every 50 words should have a unique reference. One means that as you are writing, at least after every 50, 50 words, maybe you have repeated some references, but try to bring a unique one so that the, it, can, it can bring fresh perspective to the argument, fresh perspectives to the argument. Because ideally, if you are even reading, you can get new ideas from somebody's work. So it goes also then again, another way of joining the next paragraph to the previous paragraph. Beyond the concern, the growth or the use of social networking platforms in, in the workplace, there have been concerns about the implications it has on employers and employees. Now this thematic writing, concerns by using the domain, the, the, the target audience, concerns for employers, concerns for employees, thematic writing. So what are the concerns for employers? Capture them. So, so while some employers have been reported to requesting access passwords to employee accounts. Now you see California Times. Now you see that the, this thing is a research background. So he's bringing things from BBC and stuff, industry to point, to make an argument and force. Other explore, other, others are exploring policies and strategies to leverage social media and marketing. Carmen, 2009, which may be an academic, and BBC, 2009, which may be a practitioner report or an industry account or even a industry news bulletin that is emphasizing that. Now, what have I done here? Well, the person has been able to point out employees, what their employers have been requesting access to employee accounts. So employees are concerned about this one. But the employers are also concerned about how to leverage it for marketing, so the strategic perspective. So employees have concerns about our issue to do with privacy. So the person can, uh, could have said that there have been concerns about implications uh, uh, on both employers and um, uh, um, uh, um, employees. Two of these, namely two of these uh, concerns are privacy and then strategic use of social media. For example, then you go on to say, Carmen 2009 shows that, Da, 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 da. Then you also give an example now, and that the other recent reports from the UK have shown that firms in UK are also asking questions. They'll put the BBC one there. So that's one I've expanded that if I want to write more, I've expanded the discussion and I'm illustrating more. If you look at here, you look at the first paragraph, the social networking is increasingly becoming a phenomenon. It's an argument. Where is the evidence? The evidence is in the first report, but he has to illustrate it. So he presented the evidence and illustrated it at the same time. In the 20, he could have said in 2011, first report on social networking and, and business stated that. Da, 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 da. Now, let me point out something. You see, sometimes it's, for example, the, the, the big organization, WHO, UN, and stuff. They, they may have an author who has written a paper, like maybe watching, I wrote a report from BBC, maybe uh, US, uh, the US, uh, maybe the US, uh, uh, um, BBC or even UN. And then, so you can write what in 2011, but what in 2011 doesn't tell you from reading that it's a UN report. So to emphasize and sell your work, you start a recent UN report on social networking and business. Stated that then at the end of that, come and put what in 2011 here. But if I just put what in and do that, then you have to find out in which context. Sometimes we position the literature in a way that it sells the work. That ah, even the UN is concerned about the issue. Now I could have the person could have written all these things that I mentioned, folks. But the reason why you put the force in just a little bit of it, I'm not saying that every sentence you bring UN and stuff to it, but occasionally you need to sell the work to let position the work at, at a level that people can appreciate. Another thing it can be from even the one who is who are the top guys in the area. For example, let's say that Hunt, Hunt is one of the relationship marketing experts. 
and then you write and then you write that uh, um, relationship are defined by hand is now anybody who is a relationship marketing executive or author or uh, 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 academic will know that if you mention hand you have satisfied us now why is this important when i was doing my phd at my viva the examiner told me that i'm using critical realism and I use only the social scientists in critical areas. I never mentioned any information system scientists who use critical areas. No I are ready to. So I mentioned one or two. I said, yeah, I know you mentioned Dobson and you mentioned this, but there are other guys who have done better work in that area. Go and remove the social scientists people from the UI information system. The degree we are giving you is a PhD in information system. So you're going to be ambassador. Know your people in your domain. So I had to go back and remove all the, the same things that say and other people have said. I turned them down. Or in the bracket, I added Dobson and added Easton. Easton is even from, uh, from uh, wrote a paper on how to use critical realism in case study. Case study. And he is, he is even for marketing. But it was an excellent paper in publishing science on how to use critical realism, how to use critical realism in case study uh, 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 research. Very, very good paper. Very, very, very good paper. Anybody doing case study critical realism people should read that paper. And if you cite him, you are gone. So in the same way, if you go and talk about case study, and you are, you are talking about uh, the tenets of case study, if you are in from uh, um, interpreting, what term should be there? So when you are talking about literary review, it's not just about just putting certain names there. I remember somebody going to write something on e-commerce in Ghana, e-commerce even in developing countries, and they asking that, where is what things works? Because almost all the beginning reviews that we have, especially in developing countries, he is the one who did it for us. So you have done this and you didn't mention him. So the guy called me, and the guy is now applying to join UG. He said, Prof, when we used to teach us in masters, we didn't take it. I'm now in hungry. I'm doing my PhD, and your boss, my, my supervisor, is always, <laughs> my, my, my supervisor, who is also their lecturer, is always talking about using your works to teach. And I'm telling the people in the class that I know you, I know you, you supervise me. I say, you wonder you were uh, under me, you were disobedient. <laughs> you are using my name as a big name there. So who are the big guys? How can you write on? It's a, a, a service marketing in Africa and no mention Hinson. How can you might write on CSR in Africa and no mention, even in Ghana, no mention Hinson and you mention uh, uh, Danofori, the provost? So some of the things are positioning. Positioning. That's why I told you that even your own supervisors know what they have been doing, the people in your department. Otherwise, when you come and present and you say you have done a literary review, so you read everything. Eh? <laughs> Last year, somebody applied to a department and he said he, all his presentation in the uh, uh, during the, the pre-entry uh, 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 presentation for us to evaluate during your interview. Very, very, and these authors are saying this, and that's why I want to do my PhD. And you are chosen some very, very interesting areas that almost everybody had researched on. They said that, and they asked me a question. Now, you, all these things, and said, who are those who said, so oh, these are the authors. They said, ah, so there's no Ghanaian who has said anything. They said, oh, when you change, you didn't see anything from Ghana. Then they said, really? They said, yes. And they kept quiet. <laughs> you didn't see anything anymore. So the people who are writing in Ghana were sitting in the audience, were just watching him. And the way the guy was boasting, he said he even wrote to the guy abroad. And the guy gave him ideas and all kinds of stuff. And said, ah. So you are coming to a department, the topic you want to research on. So they ask a question, then they tell him that, why don't you write back to him that he should supervise you? Then the guy got offended. And they said, he just asked him a very nice question that you are saying that nobody in Ghana has done this area. You want to come to come and do a PhD in the area in the department. So why don't you write to the guy to come and supervise you? Since not nobody ever in Ghana has done a topic like this, or no Ghanaian even living, no Ghanaian working in the US has been done a topic like this. One of the things that we always tell students is that you use the word arguably, or to the best of my knowledge, so that you can be able to get away with some of the things. Because you cannot know everything. And you cannot cover everything. Now, the last part of the literature review has to be a concluding statement. Is that say that somehow businesses have to respond to this growing phenomenon. However, the questions I should employ is because what are the potential risks and benefits of social networking in the workplace? Now, this is for an abstract, sorry, a research background. So the end should pose a question, not necessarily a research question, but things that should come up towards your next section when you're writing your actual um, research problem. Now, so in a bad review, you see sentences are disjointed. For example, uh, like this, sexual harassment has many consequences. Adams, Kotek, and Padgett found that some women students said they avoided taking a class or working with certain professors because of risk of harassment. They found out that women, men and women students reacted differently. He has finished you. He has not passed any argument. He has not passed any argument. He has just reported. This is descriptive. Look at that descriptive. Benson and Thompson study in social problems. 
Okay. It's not always, if you are using a book, unless it's very, very necessary, you don't need to mention the title. I, it's reports that sometimes if you emphasize that it's a UN or a WHO, this, you may want to. Okay. But your whole action, you may, like this one that you have done here, Benson and, 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 uh, and Thompson study in social problems, less many problems created by sexual harassment. You even tell us what the problems are. In their excellent book, prof, the professor, Dish and Wiener, give a long list of difficulties that victims suffered. Also, no didn't tell us anything. This is how descriptive writing is. They just drop the descriptions and leave it out there. We want analytical writing. So analytical writing, we are moving into more argument, evidence, illustration. Literature review is a synthesis of available. So we want to see the evidence of synthesis. You are putting, when you put two or more papers in a, uh, uh, in a, in a bracket, you are showing that they agree or they attest to the argument that comes preceding the, uh, the, the bracket. Number two, when you illustrate, you also enhance our understanding because we and you and I were not there. I, uh, you only you were there. The rest of us, your audience, were not there when you were writing or you were reading. So illustrate one for us to know whether there's something in the paper that's of relevance to what you are saying. So victims of such harassment suffer a range of consequences, from lower self-esteem and loss of self-confidence to withdrawal from social interaction, change career goals and depression. So he's put all of them in the bracket that when you look at Benson's work, DG's work, Adam's work, you will find this collection. And he also shows, you might not see, there's also a timeline. It's like over a decade. That means that the, over the last decade, you see chronological writing subtly being put inside. Do you see it? Who can see this chronological writing inside? Mm? And can tell me where you can see it? Am I the only person in the room? So um, what I see is that if you look at the references in the in the, um, the bracket, mm -hmm. Adams, Quote, and Paget, 1983. That is previous Benson Thompson followed, that is 82. Um, and then this and and 1990. Now, what he's showing that is that some of the factors that are here have been have been persistent yeah, since 1990 to 1990. So you see that he's trying to just give you a chronological perspective. It doesn't, it may not be necessary, but it also has a different meaning if all my papers are all 1990. It shows that these are all recent studies. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not bad. I'm just trying to let you understand what, what do you want to emphasize in that statement alone. You can, you can throw in, sometimes too, you want to show that even in 1980, as far as 1980, this was still an issue. Oh, sometimes somebody may have different references there, but different, the same year, but different countries. That's what you may not realize. When you go into look into the, uh, you, you may add a statement, these, these, you may just say these, um, these factors uh, uh, span, uh, uh, span, tend to be, uh, tend to be, uh, uh, Tend to span across and uh, uh, I read all this. This factor I read special your country, and then he would meaning that there are different countries that are there or tend to be common to uh, countries in West Africa. They mentioned Togo, Liberia, and uh, um, and uh, which other African South African country is there? And uh, Ghana, I uh, mean Ghana too. Yeah, Ghana. They worry people. There was evidence from uh, is it uh, well, uh, BBC? Yeah. So Ghana, Togo, and Nigeria. So let's see that. Ghana, Togo, or Ghana, Benin, and Nigeria. So then you, you say that. So depending on what you ask, you want to emphasize, you can be able to subtly put in certain arguments. And then you see the research of reading your work, so wow, interesting. This is, inter this is new. This is interesting. I'm now looking at, so that small paragraph the person has written in just 300 words or 200 words, it's very loaded, loaded with evidence, either from the country perspective, that's methodological writing, and then he's also bringing something from the chronological perspective, and he's also doing something thematically. He can actually tell you that social interaction tends to more the uh, withdrawal from social interaction tends to be more dominant with people with this, this age group, as evidenced in Nigeria and Togo, whilst career change goals tend to be dominant with this age group, as evidenced in South Africa and this. Then he's even bringing different dimensions to it, especially for a student who wants to make argument, place an argument that there's a need for a generational perspective, a generational perspective of future research on, on, on sexual harassment, about how different generations ad adapt to it or what they go through. Because technically, 
somehow, sometimes we see that even as a, as a researcher and, and being an academic and what I've been, reports I've said, how some of these uh, uh, perpetrators attack undergrads are quite different from how they manage PhD students and how they manage master's students. So you have got three different groups. Opia oh, said, don't be, don't be scared. <laughs> so I'm just telling you the truth that what I've, I've observed myself. I remember some students came from one department and told me that the head of department and others lectures in the department are asking for, um, uh, uh, is it lunch or you know, uh, tea in their houses? And I said, how did all of the three of them ask at the same time? I said, interestingly, they all ask at different time. They all ask the same thing. It seems they have been talking together. <laughs> This is about, now she's in the, is it fifth year or something like that? She's trying to finish. Anyway, so what I'm trying to point out is that the, the attacks are different, you know, different, different, uh, different, different uh, uh, experiences. And maybe a generational perspective can actually be taken from the study. Okay. So please, what is, what is good about a good literature, what is good about a, a relevant literature review, and analytical literature review is that there's argument, evidence, and illustration all the time. Good. Now let's go back to what I want to actually teach. And I've seen some hands up. So whilst I, I switch there, so you can ask your question. I saw Joanne, I saw a couple, couple of people. Okay, please go ahead. I may not be able to call all the names, but just go ahead. Um, I, I, was, I was just a little bit concerned. Um, you mentioned something which has still stayed with me. You said that you would normally advise that if somebody uh, is writing that every 50 words has a unique uh, reference. So if you're writing a 60,000 word paper, uh, I don't <laughs> know my calculation. I'm looking at 1,200, which is 50 extra pages. What I mean by a unique reference <laughs> I understand you. What I mean by unique reference is that in that same page, you don't repeat the uh, one author unnecessarily on that same page that you are on. So some of the authors can come back on the next page again. For example, if I use the same author for oh, the first, okay. I have a first paragraph of let's say 300 words. And now paragraph, let's use, let's use a thesis. Let's use one of the examples that I opened up earlier. I'm using my own work during my master's. I could have done mistakes. I can't remember what I did the writing. Okay, no, this is Dr. Whiting. So, so let's use this one. Maybe this one has been finished. So let's look for a chapter, which is an argument chapter, a natural chapter that has some argumentation. Okay, so let's look at this one. So application of this theory. So you can see out of the CC, this is a literary review, so it will be well done. So there's one there's one reference here and it's still, a, a, then there's, now there's an illustration of this guy's own, then there's an illustration of this guy's own. So you see, it has, it has enough, it has captured this one. So let's, let's go, okay. Then it goes back again, and then he mentions um, this one again, which is the same paper here. And then it's like again. So you realize that he's actually discussing all the, the same researchers. So he's not done anything wrong. He's discussing the same research because he's reviewing their work. I hope you understand me. These studies were conducted across the, 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 the then this is to the retail industry, and then this one to the to these two are the retail industry. So it's a, a discussing papers from the retail industry. So these papers exhaust here. So these are only two papers that have been used here. There's nothing wrong about that one. But it's because of the way the argument is being done. But as you go to the next one, he now moves on to another set of authors. But if these same two people came again and they are the only ones being used here, then you have a problem. So now you see the argument has moved on. Some students find trade. Let me just give an example. Let's say Kasim and Abdallah has given you an idea. Jo Jones and uh, 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 Perot have the same idea. Now, you see, as I said, Jones and Perot, as well as Kasim and Abdallah, apply the model to research in banking and finance. Unlike the, Afro, um, the authors aforementioned, that's a comparison that he's doing, uh, 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 analytical writing, who applied the theory in the B2C context. So you see that the whole, he's trying to say the previous. The previous page, all the things I was there was B to C. Now I'm moving to B to B, so I'm going to take only only two papers to illustrate it and exhaust that discussion. When he finishes that one, he goes to another field. Okay, also in the field of tourism and hospitality, Nasser and Nasser 2010, Nasser et al. 2010, applied the theory to in the context of social networks and online travel domain respectively. Nasser et al. found out this and then talks about generation Y and other things and then goes to another one. So you realize that every paragraph has something unique to tell. But some students have 
okay, he started from the beginning, and this guy said this. And then and then you make an argument. Other authors have also done this. And then you make you cite the same author, meaning that he's now citing the author because the author has made the argument in his work. So it can it can't can, it's kind of he will not go and read what the other author, the, what the person is doing, the person who cited the work, who is citing. He will just pick what the person has said. And he said that other authors believe in this and this, but in 2000 and this thing. And other authors in Nigeria also found it. But in, you are still calling, where are the authors in Nigeria? You are still quoting but in who, who cited the Nigerian people found this. Why don't you just even jump that one and cite the people that but in cited? Because to some extent, it will also bring some diversity to your literature. But we they don't do that. And they just keep on using the same person throughout. That's what we want you to avoid. It, does, it shows that you are stayed on one work and you end up plagiarizing the person. That's what we want you to avoid. I hope you understand me. Adria. Yes. Sure. Yes, sir. So in the last paragraph here, the last page that you're showing, I see that they have started using different ones as well. I see Sue, Al, and Lee. Okay. Yeah, but, but because... It's, it's a story the person is telling. So you have to read what the person is saying. I can't just judge by, by saying, but when the person wants to be to see context, you're just using one particular tweet office just to explain something. That's allowed. If you, let's even, let me just try to read it. Out of the 66 articles reviewed in the previous chapter, relatively few studies have identified, were identified that either, that were either based and that either based their entire study on community trust theory or combine it with other theories in order to study ORM. These studies have been conducted across various industries, retailing, banking and finance, as well as tourism and hospitality. So it looks like all the ensuing, some of which are as, as uh, explicated in the ensuing paragraph. So what you're doing, it is just in relation to this argument. So he's going to do, all these are illustrations, but he's doing illustrations in an analytical way. He, comp he looks for the relationship between the two of them. So first of all, instead of just mentioned that uh, Mercury and Nat found this, and then Isling found it, he found what is the commonality between them. He said that first, comparative analysis of each work. So Mercury and then Nat and Isling and Isling et al. applied the model to research in the retail industry, studying online business B two C, the online B two C retail channel. Then he will go to illustrate Mercury's own, and then go to illustrate Isling's own. Then he'll point out what they both found. So you see, he's analyzing. So he's not just dropping the thing there. So he's still being analytical. The reason why we tell you to use different references is that we are forcing you to stay, stop staying on one reference so that you don't fall into the trap of descriptive writing. I think it's not, it's not more of the essence of counting how many references are there which are unique. It's more of the fact that move away from descriptive writing where you stay on only one author and just either draw, draw off on one author or just summarize everything from that author. So I know one student who can take somebody's whole uh, conclusion and copy the whole thing and paraphrase it, kind of put it there and then put that reference at, at the last end. He said, about, I said, what's well, the reference? That's it's, prof, it's the one down there. It's the one down there. I said, what do you mean by the one down there? All these plaintiffs come from here, yeah, it's from, from one person. I said, ah. Even if the person said it, all this, can't you find other authors who have also said this so you can, can bring some corroboration into it and then let and show that you are doing a synthesis. That scientific discussion is important to us. We the only reason why we would like to see that exhibit of one person being shown, then maybe be the person contributed something that you want to, and in that one, you even tend to block it so that we can see that it's coming from one verbatim from somebody. But to write everything, just give it to one person, then you know what we'll do? We'll take only five papers. Every each paper is about 10,000 words, and your PhD is 60,000. So we we'll take one paper, copy this guy's work, and put it inside, and, and then finish. Copy this guy. So by the time I finish, I've got my 10, 000, my 50,000 words, and I'll add my I'll add my own contribution of maybe collecting data, another 10,000 words for my data, then I think I finished my thesis. That is really bad. We don't want you to be doing that. Adria, you get it? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. The other students in the class who are not talking to me. Hello, Paul. Yes. Yeah. This is Richmond. I wanted to ask a question. Um, when we were looking at the good literature review, mm -hmm. uh, you made a statement, but I wasn't. I didn't get it very well. But I also want to ask a question in relation to the in relation to the uh, referencing. Okay. So, for instance, if you want to demonstrate that you have uh, you are um, reviewing literature from different countries. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, can you say 
evidence from Nigeria, then you put a reference there, maybe Boati in 2012, um, Ghana, Richmond, 2000 and something. So you are showing that the literature you are reviewing is from different countries. So you bring the country and then you bring the references associated with the country, reference associated. Can you do something like that? Yes. Um, you can do that, actually. You can do that, actually. I wanted to show you something to illustrate what you are saying. So give me a second. Then your other question was what? Whilst I'm looking for what you are, you just asked. Your other question was what? Yeah, so I, I was just trying to see whether that was what you were saying because I uh, you were talking about literature from different countries. No, so I wanted but to know whether that's how you want to use the countries. Are you just mentioning them or are you making arguments out of it? Yes. No, so let's the sexual um so for instance um evidence from ghana evidence from nigeria brought in 2002 ghana let's look at one let's take a look at one i don't want to use my mouth to say look at this paper this paper investigate the impact of mobile phones on micro training activities of women traders in ghana Eastern literature has fairly covered studies on mobile phones usage and mobile for the development in south Saharan africa these studies include you see how the argument started in South Saharan Africa. These studies include mobile phones and fishermen and farmers in Ghana, mobile sharing practices in Ghana, mobile phones and development in Nigeria, mobile payments in Uganda, uh, in, in Uganda and mobile phone ownership and capital, social capital in Tanzania and Af South Africa. Now, let me ask you, despite these studies, there's a call for more studies to attest earlier findings in different contexts and different microeconomic activities and other to contribute better understanding of the impact of mobile phones in micro distance. Look at the statement that is here. Now, I'm asking you and the rest of the class a question. Can the author make an argument if you just mention really just the country? Can you actually make this argument? I don't think so. Why? Yes, because um, you are saying you are you are you are giving um, an account of research done in other countries. Yes, but yes. So you are trying. Yeah, the other countries is the countries in different contexts in different contexts. Other countries, but he added something more. I agree. Yes, uh, whoever it is, is it a uh, judge? You are, I, I'm not looking at my my name stick. My name is so. Please go ahead. You say you agree. I was saying I disagree because um, I think what you have showed us right now has two different things that I, I was actually looking at the first thing at the top before you showed, you, you put your curse on the middle. The first on the top says academics have begun to catch up with studies seeking development solutions through mobile phones. And there you've got okay. Jagan 2000 and so on. So I think that you are able to make your point without necessarily, um, providing the information that each individual author or group of authors um, okay. gave. Okay, Ajah, Ajah, maybe you may not be getting one. Look at where the argument is coming from. The, the, for this one, the argument has been made though. The, the conclusion has been made. This paper responds to the call for research. The paper investigates the impact of mobile phones in micro trading activities in women traders in Ghana. The, this, is, has, this particular here was about the issue gap and the theory gap. And that has been established by this statement. But the Ghana he has now brought it, he needs to defend it. So he goes on to say, Ezan Lisha has fairly covered studies on mobile phones usage and, and mobile phones for development in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's a good, another statement. That's why I started reading that one. Then he goes to do two things, which I don't know why you are all not seeing it. He talks about, he could have just said this include, this says include Ghana, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, but he did something else. What is he doing here? Read the sentence. Read the sentence. I think the in one. this particular case, it's because- I got that, I got, hold on. Sorry. Uh, 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 Rich one, come, your hand is up, yeah. Oh, no, I was the one asking that question. Okay, then I draw, come back. So. so I was saying that this particular one is a little different from what he asked because from here, I can see that this person says that the impact of mobile phones in the micro trading, blah, blah. Blah blah blah, and it's covered. It's covered studies in the mobile phones usage and mobiles for development. This is a really broad 
thing that he's talking about. So it was important for him to narrow down now and then talk about what the individual authors did. Okay. Now, what you but asked in the question that I was looking at, that what he said no, was no. pretty specific, and so it was okay to bring the different authors that said the same thing. Yeah, but let me explain something to you. Maybe you all not seeing that. I don't know why you all not seeing it. The only way you can write this statement, despite these studies, these studies, these are the studies that are preceding. There's a call for more studies to attest to test these findings in different contexts. That's the Ghana and different microeconomic activities. Look at what the person has been writing here. Mobile phones and fishermen, mobile sharing practices. If you look in the paper, it's the same thing about different micro activities here. Mobiles and development go there. If you look in there, this one was about, I think, fashion designers or something like that. And then mobile payments in Uganda. This one to have to do with some type of micro activity. So if you look into these papers here, there are some microeconomic activities. So he's telling you that future studies should look at other microeconomic activities and other contexts. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That is the emphasis the person is placing in here, which is a little bit different from here. We are, yes, we need to study, my, um, we need to study uh, the impact of mobile phones, but where should we study it? We need to study it in Ghana. And he's trying to tell that there have been studies on Ghana and there are studies in, but even in Ghana, there have been different, uh, different type of microeconomic activity. So even if you want to do the studies, do it in another microeconomic activity. And this one came to women traders, which is not captured in any of the ones here. So coming back to uh, Rich Monsego, your question, what you are trying to see here is that they just mention the countries can be okay, but you can also add a little bit more information that can let you do more than just mention the country. You can let, let you do other type of studies. The emphasis and the argument the person wanted to put across in the conclusion. Remember, I said that every rap paragraph of a literature review has an opening sentence, a body, and a concluding statement. The concluding statement is what you want to say. Do you just want to emphasize on the studies on different contexts? Then maybe don't go to Ghana. Then go to by this end of, at the end of the study, go to Nigeria, or go to another country. But if you want to make it in the same Ghana, then it could be because of the different another microeconomic activity you address. What if I understand? Okay. So what we are trying to emphasize here, time is up. What we are trying to emphasize, um, finance, you have a class, eh? Yes, bro. Okay. So I have to allow you to go. So, so finance, you can quietly leave whilst I answer the questions of those other students, since it's being recorded. Okay. So while, while you, are, you, you are trying to look at it, we have to be careful about what kind of arguments that uh, um, that's being put across. What do you want to say, and how do you want to say it? And what are what is that literature review you are doing going to address? Is this for a section of the work, or the entire work, or part of the work? Okay. So when we come back to my initial slice, we have seen that there are different types of literature review. Now, the one that you do when you are doing a systematic one, try to cover the what has been done, what has not been done. There could be different ways of approaching. One of them is a bibliometric, bibliometric way where you account for the different papers and citations, how many paper, times the paper have been cited. We can discuss that one later. But the other one is to also look at systematically what has been done in the area in terms of the concepts and then the geographic distribution of the concepts and then even the journals that have been used. So you can just look at like untangling the whole topic that you have within the academic, the academic literature. Now, well, in that scenario, we are trying to, all the reviews, what they try to do is to tell us what we know and what we don't know, and then what we need to know. Now, what we know is about what has been done. What we don't know is about what those which have been done, what they said we should do. What we need to know is what may be relevant for now. Let me go right again. What we know is what has been done. What we don't know is what future research is telling us that we should do. So we should go to go and we should address those ones. What we need to know is about adding relevance, even though they're telling us we should do that, which of them is relevant now, especially for you that is doing a PhD. So you, in a very good way, in many of the PhDs, at the end of the a chapter like this, you, you try to point out which of the gaps will inform your, your, your study, which of the gaps will inform upon all the interesting gaps that you found, which of them are relevant to the type of study that you are going to carry out. So no, make, make sure that you can't just, you don't just carry out a review without letting us know what will be relevant for the study that you are doing. 
the thesis that you are trying to carry out. It's very, very important that that is made, is made certain. So that when we look at your work, we can be able to point out that, okay, this is what was, has been done. This is what has not yet been done. And then this is what needs to be done. This is what needs to be done. So please keep that in mind. Okay, now let me continue. I'm just trying to see if I can find. Okay, good. So let's continue. So in, in the different fields of study, it's always good that before you start your work, you look at the different research that and uh, reviews that exist. So sometimes the reviews may come with something like the status today and future outlook, a classification of export marketing problems or small and medium. So they can focus it on it on a particular uh, type of firm size and their contact context, maybe developing countries. The, uh, and then some people can also focus on a typical type of set of journals, hospitality and tourism journals. Others can also look at a particular two, two concepts and then look for uh, not just a review, but try to develop a model out of the factors that they have found. So entrepreneurship and dynamic abilities, national culture and entrepreneurship, review of behavioral research. So look at the research that he may classify as behavioral. It's not all the research that he's looking into. So review can be very selective in nature. Accounting like this, economic value added. A review of theoretical and empirical literature. Theoretical means that papers that don't have theory, um, um, academic, don't have data or don't have empirical literature, empirical data in it. So he may call that one theoretical, and then the ones which are conceptual, and the ones which have got some research data in it, he may call it empirical. Research of the a review of any um, management literature and its implication for standard setting. And accounting and accounting transition in Europe. So this one is very contextual, Europe. And then IFRS, that's um, International Financial Report Stand this Standards, Reporting Standards or something. I'm not an accountant, so accounting can help me. Adoption accounting mm -hmm. quality. Okay, then the use of finance disclosure indices in accounting research, a review article. Marketing, place branding. I think somebody did something on national branding or something like that the other time. Methodological issues. You see, the person is even not looking at just cross cultural marketing, but the methodology issues in cross cultural marketing. International services marketing review of research, 1980 to 1998. It's about a 20-year review. Structural equation model or structural model marketing review and assessment. Cultural study in international marketing, critical review and suggestion for future research. Now, sometimes your, your PhD can contribute to knowledge by even producing a review. By the time you finish your PhD, you could produce a review that can be. Because because of the way the, the uniqueness of your PhD, you may be the first person doing the pre, combine the factors in that unique way. So you may want to do a review to see what, how the factors have been studied in the past. Finance, taxes and corporate finance a review, efficiency and fi financial institution review and a preview of research past, present and future, sorting and 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 voting a review of literature on urban uh, public finance. But please, this is. The other type of review, the one that you use to be able to establish the gas for you to do your PhD. The other one I told you was topical review is much more to explain concepts. So I showed you, and you can use that one to do something else. So there are all different types of review. They have different approaches to it. Okay. Behavioral finance, a review and synthesis. Efficient capital markets, a review of theory and, and, and work. Empirical work, finance and economic growth, a review of theory and available evidence, public administration, big questions in public network management research, collaborative public management, public public administration research, assessment of general publications, technology transfer of public policy, a review of research and, and theory, public sector motivation, sector work motivation, review of current literature <laughs> and a revised model. That means I may be looking within the last maybe 10 or seven years, quite close. We're not going that far. Public par private partnership and international performance review. Interesting. Okay. OMIS. I think OMIS, you know these things already. I'm not going to re read these things for you. I've been teaching you these things for some time. Cross disciplinary. So sometimes somebody may cut across discipline. Look at this one. The concept of information overload, a review of literature from organization science, accounting, marketing, MIS, and related business disciplines. A partial review of entrepreneurship literature across disciplines. A cross disciplinary review of the concept of accountability. Okay. Now my own reviews. These are even this an old set. Um, uh, these slides are quite old in terms of the year. Because cloud computing research we did it about four or five years ago. I've not updated 
um, updated with a new reference. Okay, additions were done um, in 2020 or 2019, 2019, 2019, okay. So, just before, so first one addition, a review of PMU's theories and research, future research directions, digital entrepreneurship in business enterprise, a systematic literature review of digital piracy research. That's all them are with my PhD students. We have done recent new ones, um, Obed, if I write, you have done one on globalization and e-commerce and fair work even, and then digital platforms stuff. Yeah, and then uh, mobile phones, financial, this one, this one I think I showed you the mobile phones and financial services. E-commerce in LDC, this one won the best paper award in a journal, uh, journal of African business, I think so. And then <laughs> e-commerce in developing economies was the first chapter of a, uh, one of the good books on e-commerce in developing economies because the topic was just straightforward the same thing we had the book was called e-commerce in developing countries so and i wrote a chapter on review of theoretical framework so they made it the first chapter that's a good contribution that i we were trying to make okay so when you do the review you are trying to undertake the study that have been done in the past to be able to tell the future and most often we want you to focus on concepts and then that are relevant to the research that you are doing. But you can also look at it either in a specific area, in a specific set of literature, a specific set of um, journals, um, a particular timeline, all depends on you, the author. You have to justify your, your choices. But you don't confine yourself to one set of journals and one set of geographic region, more about the country. So, for example, I did um, developing country because the developed country or the general one had been done, but they didn't even look at developing country. So I needed, I needed, they needed I, I knew that they needed to, we needed to fill that gap. So I addressed that gap. We saw somebody do something on Europe. Okay. So thereafter, this is what you may see. You can categorize your literature by research issues, the theory, the methods, the level of analysis, the graphic location, the industry, and the time, the journal, and the research gaps. So last time when I showed you one from Dr. Watin's work, I showed you that in the in the back, you, in, at the end of the work, you could see a table. And the table, when you write the authors, you write the industry too. You write the industry, then you, that, that presents the other part. So you can also show the geographic region. The level of analysis has to be there as a micro study, a meso study, or a meta study, or a, a macro study. I think I did something like a, a chart to be able to explain that one to you. So these are some of the ways you can categorize the literature. Now, is this relevant? Your gap can actually come from any of this. But for a good PhD, you want to start with a, a theory gap and an issue, a theory and issue. Then you can come and add either a method or a country. A general cannot be a, a PhD gap. Timeline, not necessarily, unless you are in finance, you are trying to look at something, or account, you are trying to look at something like a time series where time is relevant. But most often you see that it's theory and research. But you saw that in Dr. Watkins recent one that we were just reading today, we saw that they said the in the bank industry had received less attention in that area. So that was another gap that added onto the existing gaps. Not that this was the primary gap. So there are there are supplementary or complementary gaps, in fact, complementary. They complement what exists. Something has to be there for them to complement. They cannot be on their own. So the, those complementary gaps come and add onto the two, these two research issue and then theoretical gap. So when you are writing a review, the first bag, the background is trying to establish why should we need a review, especially if you're writing as a paper. What are there existing reviews? So that sometimes I tell you to take note of the existing review that are there, then tell us where you won't depart from the existing review. Sometimes in terms of years, the last review ended 10 years ago, or seven years ago, or five years ago, you are picking up from there to start another review, okay? Number two, you have to uh, tell us how you define the concept. The fact that you you think that uh, you may not, you may think that everybody understands the concept that you are trying to research on the way you understand it. Entrepreneurship may, and then female entrepreneurship, you may have a different way of looking at it. It's surprising that somebody is doing a review on female entrepreneurship, but you will not count women entrepreneurship as part of female entrepreneurship. So it's women, and you may justify it. So please, framing the research area helps us to, because you are this is a scientific process, you need to define the, the, the baseline. So what's the baseline? What is the concept you're trying to do? How, what are the sub-concepts in the area that you're going to look at? And how do you classify the research work? Then you can also go to the scope of the work. How far you go in terms of time, 
what journals are you going to search? Are you going to use databases? What databases are you going to use? And then when you do the database and you're getting the, the studies, uh, are you covering all the geographic region? If you are going to be specific to a geographic region, then you have to make sure you eliminate the papers which are not from the geographic region you are looking into. For example, if you are on to developing countries, then make sure that every paper you get is on developing countries. And you have to let us know what your definition of developing country is. Then sometimes there are some reviews that people add conference papers, but I don't like that one because conference papers are the ones that later become general papers. So sometimes if your work is spanning seven years, Somebody published a, a conference paper in 2015. Now you count it, you may see that the conference paper, but now that you are doing the review from 2014 to 2020, 2022 or 2021, you may realize that in 2021, the same person with other authors, which may be even different from the first one, have published a paper out of the conference paper. So do you count it twice then? So we try to avoid the conference paper because of this double counting issue and the conflicts in looking away. Because the conference papers, sometimes the church card record is weaker, it's lower than as compared to, and there are conferences, papers are set up for many reasons. Sometimes you get a particular perspective, there may not be any relevant issue there. Sometimes it's just a discussion. They bring your paper there, then we will talk about it and help you to go and prove it. So if you go and use that one, it may not be the actual arguments the person may put across. It's still work in progress. Over the MI lines, you yourself have submitted work in progress or research in progress papers to conferences before. Good. Then prat sure. practitioner and industry reports. Those ones are good if you really want to know what you want to do. So some of them, my reviews, I put practitioner industry reports inside, but you have to know how to review them, especially if the area is very, very voluminous and the industry reports are plenty, stay away. But if there is a new area that is now coming in, you may realize that out of the 30 or 22, academic best you have, the, the rest may be practitioner that you may need to be able to add. And that one you can be selected from, from reputable organizations like the UN and then research institutions or telecom institutions if they are, you are in the telecom industry or banking institution and the banking industry. Then the key contributors and assistants, sometimes you have to appreciate how many people are doing the review. What is their role? Sometimes somebody, the first person read and the second person also read and after you met and then you corroborated. So you, these are the things that you should look into. It, it's very relevant in establishing the scientific process that went to, into doing the work. How many people read the work, read the papers? How do you classify it? How did you put it together? Those things are important. Those things are important. So please think about it carefully when you are putting everything together as in, the, in, a, in a good review. Please think about it. Okay, so if you look at... Um, uh, this, this paper like this, oh, but if you can put the mobile phones and financial services, I know it's on the on Sakai already, but if you can put it in there, let them go and read it to so help them. I'm using the, the approach this paper use so they can understand it because I this is a it's a teaching, it's a working paper, so we use it to teach. So it was done in a way to teach you how to do it so that it will explain to you. First, it was decided that the review will be time limited. So what choices did we make? Second, what did we do? We chose papers from here and then from there. And then where do you choose the papers from? We mentioned them. And then what happened by choosing when you choose those papers? All these things are written there. Then we, we went on to make tell the choices we made when we we're picking it. Look at this. For the analysis article, the method, a method adopted by the co-author was as follows. And I was, I'm the co-author. The other guy was a lecturer. I was then a PhD student. The first author identified and read the, and analyzed 30, 31 articles uh, from the sources located, located at the social system end of the spectrum. The second author identified and read and analyze a further 12 research articles on the technical uh, 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 system and uh, of the, um, the technical system and of the spectrum. Both authors then came together to agree on the preliminary coding scheme and then how they will equal the letter, then what they uh, did. So, all these things have to be explained. If you are doing it alone, too, <laughs> now, and I, sometimes when you are doing it alone, you can write that your supervisor also looked at the work after you to either re read through and check whether your account and everything was okay. You can write something based on it to make the scientific process make uh, sound more rigorous. Sometimes people write that all the three other authors, and there are three authors, also look at the papers and then do that. Don't go and tell lies, but at least try to make an attempt to get people to look at it very carefully. I'm not saying they are reading the whole paper for you, but they are looking at how you classify the papers and put the literature, the literature together. Because sometimes what you may classify as Maybe quantitative. Somebody may see it and say it's qualitative to surprise you. Somebody sees this mismethod because you are seeing one thing because you saw a table of numbers. You just went to quantitative. 
but maybe it may just be showing just uh, statistics and it has nothing to do with quantitative study. So be careful. Okay. So please, uh, I'm just giving a snapshot of this process for you to appreciate that these are the things that we do. So the selection of data be the keywords used, the screening criteria. I think Obed, you talked about screening criteria if I'm right. And then final number of articles and the number of journals and time coverage. So you end up presenting everything you have had. Sometimes you have to present it in terms of your discipline and present it in terms of the, um, um, the area of study. So you are in maybe in um, um, accounting or you are in HR. What are the papers that can come from the HR perspective? Okay. Then you can look at all these ones are just ideas, but most often the students do the, the journals and then the, the year. After the stakeholder and the industry, it depends on the type of research you are doing. And then the other one that is also relevant is the, the number of um, years, sorry, the, the research focus, the research focus, the, and then some themes. So in one of the papers I did, I looked at papers, I looked at all the top journals in e-commerce. How many of those papers have been published there in the area I was trying to do research on? And then I also looked at the papers that are focused on development issues in developing countries. How many, the journals that are focused on how many papers did I find? And I can now make an argument that the, the top tier journals have less representation as of that time on e-commerce in developing countries. While the countries, the, the journals that are more concerned about ours. For example, this e electronic Journal of Information System that you have 18 here, it is because they have 18 because they did a special issue on e-commerce at that time. And that enabled the number to go up. So you can realize that why is there something upshoot at from like 20, 21 to 58, special issue was launched and a special issue was launched. Whenever there's a special issue, there's a spike in the in the in the in the number of papers that are published in that area. So the official issue was launched in that by a journal. That's what it meant. Okay. Then I can look at the different thematic areas within the literature that I've, I've downloaded. What are the things they talk about? Which, how many people are on retailing? How many people are going to hear system? Do you be able to position the work I'm trying to do? Then I can also look at the thematic areas. The thematic areas are the ones that are, are the ones that are relevant to your work. So they have got potential constraints. That's potential of e-commerce and constraints of e-commerce. They have got adoption and diffusion. Adoption, you have got technology adoption, managerial issues, um, uh, organization issue, the cultural issue, the environmental issue, the e-readiness issues, and the interaction. Interaction is that a combination of all of the above. So I try to look at all of them together. And you see that one is 36% and the other one is 43. Okay, the last one is 14%. It's not showing me, but it's there. Then after that, I can start discussing. I can take team one and discuss team two. And I use the literature I have found to do a discussion. Remember, I've also found, I mapped the work according to longitudinal versus, uh, sorry, uh, the level of analysis versus the theme that I'm trying to look into. So I've got the needs theme, the design of, uh, uh, of systems theme, the processes and of adoption and adaptation, and then the impact. Okay. Then I go to conceptual framework, uh, methodological issues and geographic distribution, quite straightforward. So concept, the geographic, the methodological issues, I can combine the quantitative mixed methods and qualitative and descriptive to the different areas. See, when you look at information system research, you can classify them into the social type of studies that look at social theories, the ones that use social technical and the ones that use um, technical theories, only just technical, more of computer science type. Yeah, and the ones that don't use theories at all. Okay, so from there, I can classify according to the theoretical of, of the theories. Now there are different types of concepts. There's something that we call the theory. Then we got the framework. We got the model. We got the concept based approach and the category based approach. I don't want to explain it now. I'll explain it later to you let you know the differences. Okay. Oh, if I do this, I'll end up doing all this explanation. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I can come back to it later. <laughs> so from there we have the uh, untangling the theories and the conceptual approaches. Okay. So for each of the papers, the research issues, financial issues, what conceptual approaches the person use, and the classification of the conceptual approach, whether it's a concept, is a framework, or a model. Okay.
Okay. Then so from there, you go to methodological issues and then geographic distribution. In the methodology, I mentioned this one earlier. Now you can break it down. Now, it's not all the time that you use a matrix. You can also use a, a pie chart, a, a bar chart to do that. Or just a simple table, depending on the type of, the nature of complexity of the data is enhanced in understanding. If you have the matrix approach, the matrix helps you to understand better because it can show multiple relationships. But it doesn't mean that you cannot use just a simple table and just point out the percentages. Okay, oh, sorry. So this one has to do with the geographic region. I did some study on e-commerce governance, e-governance research, and I broke it down to different regions. So this is. Then after that, I have to point out the gaps in all the different dimensions I look at, the issues, the conceptual approach, and then this. Now, the reason why this is important, I do it in the first year, in the second year, around the first, second years, it helps you to make a good choice for what your future, your TPAG will be about. In the beginning, you may, as you are finding the gaps, you may have an idea. And then as you finish the review, you have more justification. And then if you do it early, you can do, you can add on to it. Let me give you an example. My final PhD work, the number of literature I reviewed in the, as I said in the work was, I think, if I can remember, either 181 or 245, I think 245. In the first year of my PhD, my supervisor, when I started a PhD program, told me that go and write e-commerce in developing countries, what we know and what we don't know. I even plagiarized in that one. And he taught me how to, how to, how to avoid plagiarism. And that's when I used 54 articles. Then about four months later, I came back, I said, go and write another one. And I use, I think, 171 articles. Then in my, I think at the end of my third year, or just about the time I was going to go for collect my data or something like that, he told me to write the third one. And the third one, I used 245. And right, no, the third one, the third one was written when I had finished my collecting my data. He told me I should go and update it. And I, I did it 245 because I realized that there was a re more recent new paper that had been published that was not captured at the time I signed my PAD. So I had to capture those papers. Those papers were looking into e commerce in Ghana too. So please, you could actually start your, your um, be able to point out where your work will go when you do a thorough breakdown of the review like that. Okay. So earlier, I told you that when you search for literature, you can have high relevance, medium relevance, and low relevance, depending on how the degree of intimacy of the paper and its contents to what you want to do, to what you want to do. Okay, so please, let me end it here. I think it's been quite interesting. Uh, Rich one, your hand is still up, or is it old hand? It's been quite interesting. We, the now, hand. The new hand. Okay. we now have a, an idea of what we are supposed to do. Yes, Richard. Yes, please. I wanted to ask, Assuming you are, you are, you know, your thesis, you are concentrating on the public sector. Let's say you want to study counterproductive behaviors in the public sector. Is it um, advisable to also review literature from the private sector, since uh, scholarly works from the private sector? Question is that which of them is the, um, it's a very good question, but which of them is the central theme that you are looking at? Is it counterproductive behavior or the public sector? Counterproductive behavior. Good. Now, I would advise you to do. Yeah, so the, the, I would advise you to do the review on counterproductive behavior and point out what has been done on public sector so far. So, like you see, the student okay. that we looked at right now, you're doing online relation marketing in the banking sector, but the online relation marketing re uh, review, he looked into both all the other industries, but then he was able to point you how there's a lacuna of knowledge in the banking area. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris. Chris. Yes. Rob. What is happening to you? You said that you, you are angry with some best men and some other. <laughs> and I was like, what, what happened? Why somebody went to, why, why oh. you, after you went to become a best man or what? Hey. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> when I when oh, you enroll in the PhD I'll program, we you are now a big guy. So any comment you make out there, you might not know that we are all watching. 
<laughs> oh, that, uh, that's very interesting, bro. Hmm. Anyway, bro, I want to find out, you know, for the assignment you are giving us, I mean, this class has been very informative and I would love for some of us who have an idea of what we are doing with our supervisors for the PhD thesis, I would love to do the, uh, for the topic that I'm doing, a systematic review of it. But if we are to submit the work to you through Sakai, it would mean that if it is going to be incorporated in our thesis, when we run plagiarism at the end of the thesis, when we are done, it's going to, you know, record that this particular work has been submitted to um, Sakai already, University of Ghana. No, no, how, no. How no, can no, we... No, no, no. I've, I, this question, I've answered it several times. First of all, the way that the search engine does is that if it, it is not going to always look at it, if it is your own work, if you highlight, it will highlight everything. If it's your own work, you can mute it. The only thing is, I don't know how UG's own does it, but I know my with my friends in Gimpa, they have got the full version of uh, Turn It In. So when, it, when you have the can mute it has. Sorry? I don't think we can mute us, sir. So I, yes, I, was like, yes. I, I, saw, I saw I saw that you can we can send you an email. But it doesn't mean you can't publish, because all, all the students have been publishing from their work. It may highlight some things. But you have to get, that's why you have to, nobody tells you that you have to produce that one from the UG one. But if it's your own work, that's why you're supposed to, remember last week I showed you, I was supposed to show that the work you are published from it. So everybody will know. Remember, even graduate school that says that, bring the list of things that you are published before in the, in the end of the work. I showed it to you. Those of you who are there, remember, I showed you at the, in the graduate handbook that the end of the, the, the list of publications should come. So the students have been doing that and they use that, those ones and the code, the count will go low. Okay. Find a friend and get okay, it. Prof. <laughs> okay, Prof. Thank you. But you see, when you say somebody has plagiarized, you have to go and look at the work the person has plagiarized. You come and find that it's the person's own work. And it's his he published out of the He has cited their work as part of it as his own work. He cited for Jesus. How can you write a paper from a work which is very different? And the university is pushing you to publish before you actually finish. So what, what will you do? Uh, even especially your 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 if you are doing qualitative study and you're writing on Eco Bank, the thing you put in the paper almost uh uh, uh, uh 50% is a, a subset of what you are putting your PhD. So it's an extract. Everybody will see that it's an extra from your own PhD. Do you understand me? A paper cannot have entire everything in your your thesis. So anything that you do you everybody everybody who is smart can see that this plagiarism is a subset. And if you highlight it and we look at where it's coming from, we don't just say that the thing has plagiarized. We look at where is the source of the plagiarism coming from. And we look at the UG paper, who did the UG work? It was submitted by you. Then we know that it's your own work that you actually published. And if it's published even in a foreign, in, a, in an academic journal, you'll be authored in the paper and then your, your, your name will be the list of this. So it, it happens. Don't use it as an excuse and say that you, because of that you publish. And then your friends will publish and you'll finish and you'll be sitting down. All the students that I, I presented to you as winning the vice chancellor's best award, they all published from their PhD. So didn't they have that issue? They had the issue. But they were, I told them to mute it, and they also they all muted it from the work because it's their own work, and they have cited the thing already in the work, at the end of the work that they have done this work. Yes. OK, thank you, Prof. Gilbert. Yeah. Yes, Prof, good day. I'm tired, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Doc, I don't know if I missed it, but then um, I'd want to know ideally or on the average, how many papers are we supposed to um, read for a PhD work? Standard. I, can't, I, I can't tell. I can't tell what is the standard to review because it depends on every area. I told you my own has 245. I showed you a work here from UG that was 66 articles. Those are the only 66 relevant articles in that area at the time the person was doing the work. So how will you blame the person? And me, I, for example, when I started PD, the number were fewer. As I was doing my PD, the number was increasing. Okay. Thank you. Remember, I, am, I keep on mentioning that are you a good ambassador of the area? It will be un unwise for you to show up at a Viva or a PD submission and papers that were published maybe a month before you uh, submitted your work. You have not Google to be able to know. What students have been doing is that they put an uh, what we call Google Alert. Anytime anything is published on this particular word, 
maybe you are doing something on, let's say, Galamse in Africa. Anytime it is published on it, you will send me a notification so that I can see whether it's an academic or not paper, and then you can trace it down. Because it will be advisable that at the time you are submitting, you are put in everything that is relevant. You may not capture all. For example, some papers may be published after you are submitted. You submitted in August, the paper came out in September. It's not your fault. Okay. 